another Sunday evening. And uh, glad you're here. Just a little um, note, I know it'll undoubtedly be re mentioned later, but uh, just don't forget after the meeting this evening that uh, we're going to have a very brief, I'll emphasize that. There you go, I'll second. Uh, we're going to have a brief um, church meeting just to um, sort a couple of little items out. Um, but yeah, it won't, won't take long. And um... Okay, let's just um, open a word of prayer. Lord and dear Father, as we had a, yet another opportunity to meet and uh, we realise, Lord, it's um, one less time that we're um, going to meet together. We just thank you for this day you've given us and, uh, Lord, the uh, opportunity to come and meet together and uh, sing hymns of praise and, uh, Father, to um, be under your, the sound of your word and uh, we just ask, Lord, that um, also with the um, business meeting is later on that everything is set be uh, decently in order and we would uh, give thanks to you. And it's in your son's precious name we ask these things. Amen. I just keep trusting my Lord. If you all stand with me for this one, we'll say it one time through. to see everyone out. Just a, a quick reminder that um, we've got the connection cards if you want to make use of those. If you want to send Pastor a message, something to pray about or something like that, please just scan that and send that through or just speak to Pastor, whatever works for you. And then also we've just got the 
two boxes in the back for offerings and permissions. If you want to make use of those, please feel free to do so. Right, it's time now for the memory verse, so if we can um, grab your Bibles, open your Bibles to Philippians chapter 3, and we'll be busy memorizing verses 7 to verse 14. So this is the last week, so the next time we're going to go through it is just going to be letters up there, so if you don't know it, um, please help me and uh, follow in your Bible, and we'll do it like that. If I get lost along the way, please just um, carry on. All right, so the way we do it is I'll say the, the reference, then you say the reference, and then we kick off together. All right, Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 to 14. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 to 14. But what, what things, things were gained to me, those I found to pass for Christ, yet yeah, doubtless I found all, all things for us with the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, Lord. for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And do not have a time that I may with Christ, and be found in me, not having my own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is to be faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God our faith. For I may know me and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, be made for unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already obtained, either already perfect, but I follow after, if the are not men. Christ Jesus, brethren, I come not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forward to those things which are before, I press to put the mark the Christ of the Lord God. Jesus. And again, but what things were gained to me, those are counted loss of Christ. Yea, doubtless I have counted all things, but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but time, that I may be Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness which is of the Lord. That which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. That I may know me in the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, be made conformable unto his death. That by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, neither already perfect, but I have followed after, if I am may for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I can not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen.
catches you, your attention. And as we were preparing for this service this evening, I was reading 1 Corinthians chapter 11, just kind of going over it. Uh, since we use that a lot as we do the Lord's Supper and we use the model that's shown there, uh, and there's a phrase that, that's repeated. And there's something that we say every time after the cup is passed out. We read the verse and then we say what? This do also in me. And then with the bread, we do that as well, don't we? It's almost become, it's just tradition. It's what we do. It's what we say. It's why do we do it? Well, that's what the Bible says, right? I mean, that's what it says, yes? So this evening, we're going to take a few moments and ask ourselves this question. What do we remember when we say, in remembrance of me? What is it we're remembering? That'd be a good thing to remember what we're remembering, right? It ceases to be a, you know, if you don't know what you're remembering when you're remembering, it ceases to be helpful remembering what you're supposed to be remembering, is it not? Say, how many different times can you say remembering? Quite a few, I guess, all right? 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let me see if I can... That's actually not from the sun, so I'm sorry. I can't read about the cracking. That's actually coming from the uh, announcement system. Uh, from, so we'll just keep going. All right, I don't have to worry about what I'm doing back there, okay? Uh, apologize for the cracking, but that'd be okay. First Corinthians chapter 11, we'll just read verse 24 and verse 25. It says, And when he had given thanks, he greatly said, Take ye, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. And so as we're about to, in a few moments, enter into a time that we're supposed to be doing something in remembrance of Christ. We know that as we look at the cup, uh, the cup is a representation, the, the, the grape juice is a representation of the blood of Christ that was uh, shed for us as the payment for our sins. And we know that the little wafer is unleavened bread. It has no leaven in it. You say why? All throughout the Bible, leaven is a type and a picture of sin. If we use regular bread, then we're remembering that has leaven in it. We're remembering a sinful Savior, and that just does not work, does it? If you have a sinful Savior, you have a serious problem uh, because you have no Savior whatsoever. And so that's why that is that way. But it says, in remembrance of me, both times, after you have the cup and after you pray to the bread, this to you, in remembrance of me. And so I would like to this evening propose to you uh, three things that we are remembering when we say, in remembrance of me. So if you would take your Bibles and 
I'll go to 1 Peter chapter 1, and I'll read verses 18 to verse 22. When you're there, it says, For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversations received by the traditions of, from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth to the Spirit of unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. So you look at those verses, I would begin to tell you this evening that there's three things contained in those verses that when we say in remembrance of me, that we should be remembering. The very first one is this, remember our ransom. Every time you take communion, every time you look at that cup, every, every time you look at that, that bread, remember our ransom. If you're here tonight and you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you were bought with a price. Sin, what we know the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We know we're all sinners. If you're here tonight and you say, well, I'm not a sinner, well, then you're not human, okay? Uh, we're all sinners. And if you think you never sinned, then you just sinned because you lied. Uh, straight to my face, all right? Straight to whoever you said that to. We've all sinned. We've all done wrong. We've all fallen short. And if we are sinners, the Bible then tells us, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life of Jesus Christ our Lord, Romans 6.23. And so we see that, that we, the wages, that payment for sin is death. That, that word redeemed or, or is a slavery term. It literally means buying someone's freedom as a one-time event. In other words, in the, old, in, the, in, the, in the Bible times, and especially in the New Testament times, they would have slave auctions. People would be put up for auction. And we can't, that's, we would look at that and say, that's a horrible thing, but that was a common thing in the Roman Empire. And that person would go up for auction, and most of the time they would strip them a hole with a hand, and they would stand there with basically nothing, and that's what you would bid on. And that, that when they when they auction would go up, and the price would be set, and the price would be paid, and that one transaction, that person would be bought. They would be ransomed from the slave market to come into that home and become their servant for the rest of their lives. So it was a one-time thing. Now, there were a few instances where you could get out of slavery, but most of the time, it was that Peter reminds us that we are not bought with earthly treasures. You're not bought with silver. You're not bought with gold. When we look at that cup, and we, we examine that, that cup, and we see that grape juice which represents the blood of Christ, we are to remember the fact that we are bought with a precious price, and that was the blood shed by Jesus Christ on the cross. So every time we say, remember, you know what? There was a high, Christ paid a high price for me. I mean, I, 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 over the years, you probably, hopefully I would say, it's the truth, we've grown quite fond of each other, right? Well, some more than others, I mean, you know how that goes, but uh, we should have grown quite fond of each other. But I don't know, I would like to think uh, that, you know, you would die for me and I would die for you, and, you know, we protect each other and all those types of things, but we've never been put in that situation, have we? But Christ valued you so much, he died for your sins. He shed his own blood to pay for those sins. He says, you know what? There's no earthly merit. Nothing can be earned. It is not common. It is the precious blood of Christ. Why? God has always taught that blood must be shed to cover sins. It is a scriptural principle from the beginning of time. When the very first sins took place in, in the Garden of Eden, what happened to cover those sins? A lamb was killed, and those skins became the clothing, but then there was the offering that was made. We know blood gives and sustains life, and it delivers all these things, and it, and it fights infections, there's all kinds of stuff that it does, it regulates your body temperature, 
is more valuable than anything this world could ever offer. And Christ's blood was offered as of a lamb, without spot, without blood. That's why John, as we talked about this morning, he would say, Behold the Lamb of the God, uh, the Lamb of God will take away the sins of the world. He was our one-time Passover lamb, without spot and without blemish. He was perfect and sinless, offering what you and I could never do for ourselves. God gave up his best and expects us to, in return, give him our best. And so as we say, this do in remembrance of me, we are remembering our ransom. But then in verses 20 and verse 21, I see this. We're remembering our security. Our security. Hey, when you have this cup in your hand, you look at that bread, and we take it and say, this dude remembers me, remember this. Because of the Christ having his body broken for me, and because of his blood was shed for me, I can remember this. I am secure in him. There's security there. You see, our salvation is eternal. Why? Because Jesus is eternal. Because he is God. The Bible says, if you look with me, it says in verse 20, who was barely four days before the foundation of the world. Hey, when was Jesus to be the Savior of the world? Before there was a world. He was four days before the foundation of the world. What? That he would be the Savior of the world. And we look at that and we think it's kind of, kind of odd, but you know, that's, just, that's what Scripture says, isn't it? I've heard people say, well, you know, when man sinned, then God had another plan. No, God had another plan worked out long before because he knew man would sin. It begs the question, why did he create something he knew was going to sin? Why did he have children that you know were going to be ashamed of you or, or upset with you or disobey you? You know, same, same principle. It was planned by God before the creation of the world. Carried out by God's very Son. God planned from eternity and Jesus carried out in perfect obedience. And Peter says he did this for you and for me. God so loved, loved the world so much that he would rather die. He would, he would have his son die so that way you could be brought back into fellowship with him. Christ's sacrifice was sufficient. He said, he said uh, the, uh, who barely was for him for the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God. How do we have faith in God? Well, through Jesus Christ. That raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope, what? Might be in God. That hope is not, well, I hope it. None of that hope is like, a, I have hope, secure, that, that it will be why? Because my faith is in God. It's in the right place. You see, the wages or the price of our sin has been paid in full, and Jesus now sits in glory there interceding for you and for me. Why was Jesus able to sit? Because if we said in the book of Hebrews, he was finished. His work was done. And so as we stop and we look at that, we think, you know what? Because Christ paid the price for me, and because he shed his blood, and because his body was broken for me, I am now in Christ, and I am now secure in Him. So, we remember what? We remember our ransom, and we remember our security. Now, there's another thing that's interesting here. Look at verse 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth of the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. As each and every one of us take this, and we soon will say, in remembrance of me, we need to remember our love. Remember our love, or you could say, remember our common bond. You understand, when, when we say in remembrance of me, we're, what we're doing is we're remembering this, that the thing that unites every single believer is represented in that cup. Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but that, that's a wonderful thing. And the Bible says that if we have that common bond, what? 
we should have an unfeigned love of the brethren. Remember, we said we should love one another. We should, and, and that should remind us every time we take of that cup. We should be remembered. You know what? I need to remember that I need to love my brothers and sisters in Christ because what? We are in Christ. This is unifying us. This has brought us together. Uh, let me ask you a question this evening. Think about this for a minute. Look around the church and see everyone in this church this evening. How many of you would know each other if it weren't for your common bond and cross? Probably not one of us, right? Probably not one of us, you know. We, we're all from different places. We're all from different jobs and different backgrounds and different everything. How have we met all each other? Because of our bond in Christ. And you see, we need to remember our love. And so in a few moments, as we, we stop and, and we take some uh, fellowship around the Lord's table, we should remember, you know what? As we, as we take this, this should be a unifying thing for us. Something that brings us together. Something that we do, yes, to be obedient, but we do in remembrance of Christ. And so hopefully tonight, when we say, this do in remembrance of me, you might have a few things to remember as we as we do that and as we partake of this. And so uh, it's a very simple thought, not very complicated thought. I didn't want to be uh, really long-winded this evening, which you're probably looking at me going, uh, but I thought it would just be a good challenge of when we say that. Let's just remember these things. Let's remember the price Christ paid. Remember that ransom. Remember the security that offers. But remember the love that that should produce in our lives for each other. Now, before the service, I have asked uh, Brother June and Brother Dieter if they would uh, come and assist me at this time. And we're just going to go right from the, the message straight into uh, the Lord's Supper this evening. You say, why? Because I think it would be fitting, rather than pausing and doing something else, to just go right into what we're remembering. After being reminded of remembering. And so, if Brother June and, and Brother Dieter would come on up. Now, um, a, as before, um, these are the, the um, are all in ones. And so, uh, let's, let's not focus on them, let's focus on what we're supposed to be remembering, okay? And uh, we'll do this together. So here's what I'm going to do. Before we start, since everything is in one, I'm going to ask the piano to play, and I'm just going to ask them each one to take each tray and to pass them out to us. And then we'll be able to, they'll be able to join you sitting down. Uh, actually, if you have that mic, we'll pass the mic between you to have a prayer, and we'll just go from there. So while the piano plays, if you would pass those out. Just remember that, I should have said this a little bit earlier, but just remember that as we do this, we ask that you know Christ as your Savior, that you've been scripturally baptized by immersion, and you are a part of this church or a church of life faith, and we'll uh, do this together in that way. And uh, in a moment, we'll, we'll go through this. And uh, what, what you do, uh, we should have all know this by now, 
Uh, but just to try to prevent it, the very first thing you pull up that first layer, and when you pull that up, the bread will be available. And so that is what we'll do first uh, to get that that ready. And then when we're done with that, when it comes the right time, that bottom tab you pull up, and the and the juice will become uh, available for you to be able to use in that part of the service. And so uh, the. We're going to go to Aubrey verse 24. Um, before we do that, uh, let me just ask uh, Brother Dieter if he would pray and ask God to bless us as we take time to remember the bread. Dear Lord, we just uh, come before you again and just thank you again for a time that we can just set aside and we can just think about you, think about what you've done for us and, and how it affects us, Lord. And, we just thank and praise you for going through what you went through. Thank you that your um, body was broken for us, Lord. And we just uh, thank you that you died on the cross and that you rose again. And Lord, we thank you that we can celebrate this on the first day of the week. And Lord, what a privilege to be counted as, as one of your children, all because of what you've done for us, Lord, and nothing that we've done of ourselves. And we just pray that we'll just keep these things in mind that you are almighty and that you've done everything for us in Jesus' name. Amen. The word of God says, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Before we proceed with the cup, um, I'll ask for Junior in a second when he's ready to be able to ask God's blessing on the And pray. Uh, most of this, Father, we thank you uh, for this time you've given us for gathering us here to not only to give you thanks and to worship you, but also to remember. Your love and forgiving us, your Son, Jesus Christ, uh, who died on the cross of Calvary uh, for the payment of our sins. Help us, Lord, that each and every one, and give us the right heart that we, we may be worthy to receive, to partake this Lord's Supper. Um, we all ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God says, after the same manner also, he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is a New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you for this evening. Lord, I know oftentimes we, we hear that phrase in remembrance of me. Lord, maybe not just say that out of habit or out of tradition, but Lord, maybe actually take the time to remember the way that you've ransomed us, the price you paid for us. And we remember the security that payment gives. Lord, also as we sit amongst our brothers and sisters in Christ and we take of this thing that you've given us, this ordinance you've given us to be able to remember you. That we realize that through you that we have loved one for another. We are part of a family of God. And Lord, may we share that love that you have given us with the world around us and point them to you so that way they too can remember these things as we do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you for coming out this evening. Uh, we'll take about a one minute break or so before we go into the business meeting in a moment. Um, if you are here this evening and you're a member, we do ask you to stay for the business meeting. We'll do our best to make it as, as quick as possible. Uh, if you're not a member, you're still welcome to stay for the business meeting. We have nothing to hide. You're more than welcome to know what's going on and, and the financial decisions and what we're doing. Um, we just would ask that only those who are members do the voting. 
and that's all. And so uh, we'll be dismissed for a moment. Remember Wednesday night, seven o'clock, we'll have our prayer meeting and Bible study on the back table. Is your ability to sign up for the July fourth lunch, um, and, and what you prefer on that. But uh, in about about a minute's time, uh, we'll just get started again and jump right into the business meeting.